We'd like to start the press conference by Minister Kamikawa. Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yesterday, I received recommendations on the topic of good science and technology diplomacy and the ODA from Professor Matsumoto, science and technology advisor to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, as well as Dr. Kotani, who is also the co-advisor. This recommendation is and embraces initiatives that are necessary to promote science and technology diplomacy, leveraging ODA, which were compiled at the meeting for the Advisory Board for Promotion of Science Technology Diplomacy, chaired by Professor Matsumoto. As far as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is concerned, we would like to, co we would like to cooperate with various partners in the private sector as well as in the academia and advance ODA usage that can lead to social implementation of Japan's science and technology in various developing countries. In particular, by utilizing science and technology available here in Japan, we believe that we can bring about innovation in countermeasures against land mines. We would like to coordinate with the private sector who are sufficient and abundant know-how is accumulated in the sector, and we'd like to start the recommendation in in the fury of landmine countermeasures first. At the same time, we received recommendation on how to create a system where know-how we gained through the social implementation in developing countries can be channeled back to Japan and translate that into further innovation here in Japan. So as far as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is concerned, we have to coordinate with various stakeholders and seek to achieve such an ecosystem which are provided for in the recommendation. That is all for myself. Thank you. If you have a question, please raise your hand. If you are called upon, please come to the nearest microphone. Please identify yourself and your affiliation. Uh, Kamiyama-san of Yomiuri Shimbu. Yomiuri Kamimura is my name. Thank you. Uh, in the beginning, you talked about ODA in relation to science and technology. One day before that, LDP's Foreign Affairs Committee made a uh, recommendation regarding the ODA for the new era. And this year marks the 70th anniversary of the beginning of ODA for Japan. In terms of the Japanese national uh, interest, you yourself, do you think what kind of ODA should be implemented going forward? Yes, this year marks the 70th anniversary of the start of Japan's international cooperation. Uh, through ODA, we have been making a contribution to development of many developing countries so far. And uh, these solid achievements uh, contributed to the Japan's growth and confidence building as well. These countries uh, make up uh, Global South, and they take up a significant presence in the world today. And uh, they are no longer uh, the uh, countries of being assisted. Rather, they are becoming uh, partners for us to lead international society as uh, well uh, with us. Therefore, Japan needs to consider new approach uh, toward that new phase uh, with these countries as well. With that recognition, uh, last year, we revised the Development Cooperation Charter. We, we announced the so-called the Co-Creation for Common Agenda Initiative, and we try to solve uh, issues of developing countries at the same time that we co-create uh, social values with various partners so that that would uh, contribute to strengthened realization of Japan's national uh, uh, interest. In March uh, this year, I established a uh, advisory panel on new financing for development under my leadership. As was mentioned in the beginning, based on the recommendation of the uh, the Science and Technology Diplomacy Promotion Council, and uh, we would like to create an ecosystem so that uh, we can bring uh, know-hows uh, learned with developing countries back to Japan so that we can create a ODA for new era. Igarasan, NHK, please. Thank you, Igarasan from NHK. Thank you for this opportunity. I want to ask about Taiwan, if I may. Now, next week, on the 20th, I believe there's an inauguration ceremony for Mr. Lai, Lai Ching Tei will take place in Taiwan. Under the, his new leadership, what type of Taiwan-Japan relationship would you like to build going forward? Also, do you intend to issue a message on the behalf of the Japanese government at the inauguration ceremony? If you could talk about this, please. Thank you. Yes, 
Yes, I understand that on May 20th in Taiwan, there will be an inauguration ceremony for the Prime Minister, for the President and Vice President of Taiwan. President will be served by Mr. Lai Li Ching Teng, and I believe that uh, the Deputy President will be served, uh, will be, will be Xian Bing Kim. We consider Taiwan to be a very important one, a very important friend whereby we have, we share basic values and we share very close economic ties as well as personal exchange. As far as the government is concerned, we like, we maintain the basic position of maintaining a working, working relationship at the non-government level between Taiwan and Japan, and at the time seek ways in which we can deepen further cooperation and exchange between Japan and Taiwan. As far as the international government is concerned, bearing in mind the basic position that, that I just alluded to, we'll take appropriate measures. Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, Nikkei Miki-san. Nikkei Miki, thank you. The 19th of this month marks the one year from the Hiroshima G7 summit. For the past one year, what is your view regarding changing international situations? And also, in the Hiroshima summit, you mainly talked about Indo-Pacific and also how you respond to China. Now, in view of the current international situation, how do you think the uh, positive impacts have been made by Hiroshima summit? From the Hiroshima summit, one year has passed. Even today, uh, I feel that the uh, world remains at a historic turning point. Even today, Russia's aggression against Ukraine uh, continues. And also, regarding Middle East situation, that it is becoming more and more tense. Uh, therefore, uh, internal society is becoming more diverse and more confrontational. Therefore, we need to uh, maintain and strengthen the uh, open and uh, free international order based on the rule of law and to realize uh, human dignity in the world. And for that purpose, uh, like-minded countries with uh, G7 as well, cooperation with those countries have to be strengthened. And also we have to more broadly cooperate with developing and emerging countries, which are called uh, Global South. Uh, this is increasingly needed. In this uh, point at the G7 Hiroshima summit, in retrospect, I can say that we have been able to make a very significant results. I believe in that. In other words, uh, rule of law and also strengthening of relationship uh, beyond G7 countries. From these two perspectives, we had discussion. We were able to uh, appeal the unity of G7 to the outer uh, world. And also, we had a, a discussion with the leaders from invited countries, including Global South. We shared recognition of the importance of the rule of law and also United Nations Charter's uh, principles. And based on Japan's leadership, we were able to make a significant step forward toward the realization of international society, not characterized by division and confrontation, but by uh, coordination, cooperation. And Hiroshima summit and last year's uh, G7 meetings under our presidency, Japan was the president last year, and we have been able to lead discussion regarding Indo-Pacific and also in areas such as food, development, health, climate, energy, and also AI. In these many areas, we have been able to show our readiness to carry out concrete actions with the Global South and beyond. Therefore, the meeting was very, very significant. Kyoto Press, please. Thank you, Nishima from Kyoto. I want to ask about uh, dispatch of personnel to multilateral organizations. This year, it will be 50 years since the establishment of the JPO, Junior Professional Officer System. Can you talk about the outcomes so far? And also, if you could assess the future challenges, please. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Just a question about the significance, the outcome, and the future challenges, challenges pertaining to JPO, which will mark its 50th anniversary this year, as you just mentioned. As far as the significance and the meaning is concerned, under the thing, under the concept that sending young Japanese, Japanese leaders 
to the world who can actually active in the international community. We have this, based on this concept, we have dispatched young Japanese people who are motivated to multilateral those organizations. And uh, this system was began in 1974. And this year will mark 50 years anniversary. This is a system whereby young people can start their careers in multilateral organizations as a result of this dispatch. Up until now, more than 2,000 people have been dispatched under this system. And they're very active as the Japanese face, the face of Japan in various, to so, so various challenges that cross borders, such as poverty and disarmament. They're active in all corners of the world. I, um, for example, I met the Union Sec Sec Deputy Secretary General, Ms. Chiman, who, who also from JPA, and also Ms. Noda, who is also the Director General for Crisis Management at Union P. They are all from JPA, and I believe the starting point for these active for leaders in multilateral organizations really began at the JPO system. So the system enjoys very long-standing history, and I believe the significance of the system is very, very critical and meaningful. As far as the future challenges are concerned, it's important that people who are dispatched to the JPO and who have completed their tenure be able to gain as many positions in multilateral institutions as possible, and that they be able to build, build up the career that is very critical. As far as the Minister of Foreign Affairs is concerned, we would like to continue to coordinate with international organizations and support young people as much as possible. I hope that we'll be able to involve young people to establish the mentality of working as working in multilateral organizations as part of, as part of career design. And we hope that we'll actually seek positions at the JPO. Thank you very much. Matsuyama san Asahi Shinbun. Matsuyama of Asahi, I have a question regarding the active cyber defense. From today, LDP started a discussion on the active cyber defense. Even within the government, uh, as soon as possible, the government wants to uh, set up a blue ribbon panel. So this is uh, interministerial efforts. How MOFA is going to engage in this effort? And also last year, Japan's uh, uh, classified defense information was breached by military uh, of China. Uh, regarding this issue, uh, government received a warning from the United States, I understand. As a minister in charge of diplomacy, uh, through your day-to-day -day diplomatic activities, how do you feel the uh, necessity of uh, active cyber defense and what kind of requests you have been receiving from other countries? First of all, regarding the bill for the realization of active def cyber defense, uh, to the extent possible, we'd like to present the bill in this regard, centering around the cabinet secretariat. Uh, Government-wide uh, discussion is being made, being accelerated, and MOFA is now being engaged very solidly in this process that for the need of the active cyber defense uh, in view of the uh, recent challenging situation in cyber uh, space uh, to government and critical infrastructure, uh, there is a risk that the uh, severe cyber attack could occur that would entail uh, serious uh, uh, security issues. We have to make sure that these should be prevented. And also, even if such a uh, attack occurs, we have to prevent spread of damage as much as possible. In view of this, in the national uh, security strategy, we confirm that there is a need to implement active cyber defense. Uh, importance of information security, this is fully uh, shared by our countries, including Japan. Therefore, we are going to uh, we are actually cooperating with the countries in order to have a sufficient cyber defense, cyber security uh, frame. Uh, in tandem with the progress in the science and technology, we are facing more imminent threat in cyber area. Therefore, including Japan's efforts, we, uh, I think uh, the need is uh, 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 shared by other countries as well. This will be the final question. And it's a question for you, I'd like to ask about the pandemic treaty, if I may. Now, in the preamble, there's reference to, in the light of the serious, in light of the serious, in the light of the serious conditions, there needs there needs to be 
submission, the response. Understand that 420,000 death has increased in the four-year period. No, the accumulated death, if you could PCR death, it's only 75,000 death. So Japan, I think Japan has responded to this situation, and this is a critical situation. Why is it that are you in favor of promoting pandemic treaty when the pandemic treaty it can be very negative for Japan? If you could talk about this, please. Thank you. With regard to the so-called pandemic treaty, I believe the question was on the so-called pandemic treaty from May 27. The 77 World Health Assembly is being is being held, and I understand the negotiations are going so that a draft treaty could be submitted to the 78th Assembly. Now, with regard to global health crisis that involve COVID-19 type of type of uh, infection, I believe that the global community needs to take a united response. They've got to prevent preparation and uh, enhance some rehens with the pandemic. I think we need to create international norms that can be that can truly contribute to the prevention, preparation, and enhanced response to the pandemic. Also, in order to make sure that the norms are effective, it's important that there's there be universal universality where as many major countries, including Japan, across many countries can sign and agree. The, as far as the Japan is concerned, we'd like to take constructive participation in the negotiations and would like to contribute to the negotiation, conclusion of the negotiation. Thank you. We'd like to conclude the press conference at this juncture. Thank you.